Ryan Little. <laughs> These are the two GPUs that we're talking about today with this um, upgrade that we have for the Optiplex 990. Now, this is a, this is the GPU that I put in there before the um, GT 730. As you can see, it's uh, roughly two thirds the size of the new GPU. This has um, two gigabytes of VRAM, as well as the GT GT 1030. Both of them are P PNY branded, as you can see. Active cooling with that little what is it, 30, 40 millimeter fan? It's really small. I don't know quite. I don't quite know the uh, absolute measurement of it, but it's a tiny fan. Surprisingly, it's not as a, it's not like really loud. I thought it was gonna sound like a Bissell vacuum cleaner, but it has some decibels that is audible. You can't hear it from a distance, but it's not obnoxiously loud. But um, this is the 1030 right here, and I'm gonna be installing it into the. Um, Optiplex. So here we go. All right, for those to see, this has a, a Dell power supply in there, and it's 80 plus gold certified. This actually has a 240 watt power supply in there. I uh, placed on um, in the description of my uh, previous video that it was a 280 watt. Um, 280 watt is the maximum output of this power supply. Um, because it's 80 plus gold certified, you know, um, I don't quite, I can't go into detail on uh, a description on how it's possible to run a 300 watt rated graphics card in the system um, 300 watts is actually the the, the the recommended wattage for the graphics card but um, the the system that Dell put together here is efficient enough to manage a uh, 1030 or a 1050 Ti in the Op Optiplex machine now With that little tidbit of knowledge, um, if you do in fact have issues with the system crashing, um, you might have exceeded the performance of the power supply, or there might be something going on on the motherboard that it could be maybe too many volts is being drawn by the, uh, the RAM that you have in, in, in the system or the CPU that you have in the system is um, if you happen to have it overclocked for some reason might be drawing too much power from the power supply so it'll cause the system to blue screen or crash if you're in fact running Windows but um, having Linux on this desktop the efficiency isn't exceeded so I mean it, it's <laughs> The maximum efficiency, I should say, isn't exceeded on this machine. Um, Linux just has a way of running the system and and being maximizing the uh, the uh, utilities on board and doesn't really exceed the the machine's capabilities um, unless necessary. But um, not saying that it's not possible because. I have crashed a couple of machines with Linux on it because I've exceeded the uh, performance of the hardware. But let me stop rambling and uh, 
I'll go ahead and do the uh, graphics card install. It's quick and simple. So, in the next shot, here we go. All right. Now here is the GPU. You want to make sure that the wires that are here aren't going to be an obstruction and not in the way because um, this one is quite a bit longer than the other GPU that was in there that's what she said so as you can see it's a simple process there's no PCI power needed to power the GPU, it's all running off of the PCI slot within the uh, motherboard. So, go ahead and let this close. Pop the lid on there and do some performance testing. So, I'll see you guys in the next shot. Alright, here I'm going to run this old Unigen demo. Benchmark that. I have the V Sync running. So, while it's benchmarking, you will see in the top right that it's locked at 60 frames a second. Unfortunately, because of the age of the uh, of this benchmark, uh, it only gives you two resolutions: 1920 by 1080 and. Um, what is it 1050 by 768 or something like that that's the one that I'm running right now and um, if I run it at 1080p um, unfortunately this 32 inch monitor that I have the desktop connected to isn't a 1080p monitor so the edges of the windows are kind of seep over into the bezel so you can't really minimize or maximize or um, see anything that's going on on the panel so the uh, graphics card that's actually in here is designed for this kind of uh, benchmark um, running at 720p and some games that are capable of running at 1080 it'll more than be able to manage that but I'm going to let you guys enjoy the uh, rest of the benchmark and um, I'm going to actually fast forward some of it so it's going to run a little bit faster than normal and when I get to the end you will see the results go there's the results and so you can see the version number right there this version of the uh, Unigen benchmark is no longer available even on their website I was fortunate to um, have one of the raw files from back in the day stored it on a hard drive so I was able to transfer that data over to this so I could use the benchmark here but, uh, there you go there's the benchmark Just in case there's anybody who's doubting uh, the capabilities, saying that it can't run any modern benchmarks, here's Unigen Valley. I'm going to run it on high.
goes the results. Minimum frame rates isn't too bad. 59.2 frames per second. Average, that is not bad at all. Then again, it's not a 1080p resolution. The average frame rates might be about like 45, I would say, frames a second at 1080p. At ultra settings. But that's what I get. Just at the uh, default install without making any alterations to the game's features. That's it. Options here and graphics, everything isn't maxed out. Not bad at all, not bad. There's a resolution right there at 1080p, it would be kind of asinine to run it at 1080p on a 720p screen, so next time. And that is going to be it for this Optimus review, upgrading old to new. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'll do some 1080p benchmarks and we'll both we'll all look at the results. Stay tuned.